So this case begins like they all do. Everything's a mystery, but all of a sudden, we have this guy. He shows up in a pickup truck, and he's upset. Son of a And he's looking for her. We need to find out why, and we need to find out who he is. Lieutenant Joe Kenda believes the gruesome murder of 60-year-old Vern Cave was personal. What we're looking for right now is relationships. So we begin with the immediate area where he lives. Everybody around there and what they can tell us about Vern and who he hangs with and who he drinks with. And if they know about a guy and a pickup truck. Excuse me, ma'am. We talked to the apartment manager where Vern resides, and she says that, you know, Vern's a nice person. He doesn't cause any problems. She doesn't believe he has an enemy in the world. I hear that a lot, and I always have the same reaction. I disagree. He has one. Have you talked to his roommates? He had roommates? Yeah. Well, that was a shock. We didn't know there were any roommates. There was a girl and her husband live with him. Well, who are they? Well, the girl's name is Grace Todd, and her husband's name is Gary. Kenda recognizes the name Grace Todd. She was the inebriated woman security guard Edward Rudy initially encountered at the crime scene. Did they cause any problems? Oh, yeah. In fact, they did. She describes Vern as being a good tenant and Gary and Grace to be trouble. What the hell's wrong with the truck? You said you were going to fix Grace, it. Grace, you know I don't have any money. It stalled on me again. What did I just say? They drink, they argue, they fight. They cause problems all the time. Well, I'm kind of looking for a problem maker. Does Gary want a pickup truck? Oh, absolutely. Usually parks in the same place. Let me show you where it is. Sure. It's that truck right there. And she points at a truck. The one with the cap on it. Yeah, that's it. It has a camper shell on it. Well, my, my, my. Uh, where's Gary live? He lives around the corner in number 11. Thanks for your help. So we go to where he's supposed to live. Police, open up. Yeah? You Gary Todd? Yeah. Now, when people are where they're supposed to be after a violent crime has occurred, that's a point in their favor. Right away, Kenda can tell that Gary shares Vern's predilection for heavy drinking. Gary is still obviously drunk, and we obviously just woke him up. But he's reasonably coherent. I'm Joe Kenda from the Colorado Springs Police Department. Can I come and talk to you for a minute? Sure, come on in. And I ask him, are those the clothes you were wearing last night? Yeah, this and that jacket. Can I take a look at that? There's no blood. He's clean, clean as a whistle. Drunk, yes, disheveled, of course, but no blood. Another point in his favor. You lived here with Vern Cave? Yeah. So I said, Gary, of all the places on Earth, how did you wind up here in this apartment with Vern Cave? Well, he said, my dad and Vern Cave were good friends. They were in World War II together. You know, my wife Grace and I, we came to town we didn't really know anybody, and he kind of just took us in. Vern was very generous with most people that he knew, and if you were on the street and needed a place to sleep, he would open his home. Well, that makes sense. Vern would extend a courtesy to someone who was a child of his friend. Where were you last night? I was out riding around. Is that your truck out there with the uh, camper shell on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where'd you go? I was actually out looking for Vern. What'd you want to find him for? Gary explains that Vern received his social security check that day, which meant he was supposed to be buying drinks for all his friends that night. Where'd you go looking for him? The places he goes. I went over by the thrift store. OK. So you are one in the same of the person our manager saw. Gary confirms that after he found Vern, he gave him a ride back to the apartment, and the two of them started drinking. Who all was with you? Just 
burn in my wife, Grace. And I decided I just had to go to bed. I was like out of it. Man, I got to kiss oh, y'all later. Oh, come on. Man, I'm right. telling you, I can't right. do it. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Went back to the bedroom, passed out. Until we woke you up now. Right. Kenda has a hunch Gary isn't the killer, but his reaction to the news of Vern's death will be the final test. Gary, I've got some bad news for you. What's wrong? Vern was murdered last night. Oh, man. Gary's reaction was genuine and was not the reaction you would get from a killer feigning surprise. He had no idea Vern was dead. And for the present moment, he's off my list. I don't think he's involved. I don't. But with Gary Todd in the clear, Kenda is out of leads. Then he gets a call. I get a radio call. Call for Kenda. Open got a key witness I think you should speak to. They didn't say good witness. They didn't say potential good witness. They said key witness. That really boosts my morale. 10 form on the way. Keys tend to unlock things, and I need this case to get unlocked. Maybe this is my key. Kenda heads out to interview a witness who claims to have spoken to Vern Cave's killer just minutes after the murder. I'm introduced to Jeffrey Kelly. Jeffrey Kelly lives very close to the crime scene in a little trailer park. Jeff Kelly. I understand you spoke to someone earlier about an incident that happened last night. I did. Can you tell me about it? Well, last night about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, we're laying there talking. We were hanging out and having a good time. Um, and all of a sudden, we hear this loud banging on the door. It's <gasps> Are you expecting something? No, no. Who is that? I don't know. This woman is screaming, pretty much, open the door. I need your phone. I need to borrow the phone. So my friend Jeff did go outside to talk to her and see what she needed. Hey, hey, what's going help. on? I need to use your phone. Slow down. I need your phone. I need your phone. I don't have a phone. And then she said, I just killed somebody. She actually said she killed someone? She did. I told her I didn't have a phone, and she bolted. She took off after that. Can you describe her for me? She said she's in her middle 20s. She's kind of small. She's kind of thin. She has dark hair. She's wearing dark clothing. Jeffrey's description of the mystery woman is a match for another important player in the case, Grace Todd. Bingo. The magic lead. He is a key witness. And he just unlocked my case. But is Grace Todd really the vicious killer police have been looking for? So you ask yourself, could this little bitty thing here who's drunk, could she do this to this guy? Imagine the strength of holding somebody down and gouging their eyes out. I mean, what force could that take? It had to be somebody with strength. 